happy Thanksgiving to all of our friends on this special, glorious time in America and day. And it's become two days in a week where we, we stop and we pause and we think about the things that we have gratitude for and the blessings in our life. And we thank the Almighty. We thank those who have helped us on earth realize all these blessings. And we take the moment to pause. They say this story about this this family who every day before they had dinner, they did grace before meals. And everyone would put their hands together and they would pray. And one time the family went to have dinner at grandma and as they're ready to put their hands together and pray, <laughs> the young daughter digs into her piece of chicken and starts eating and the mom sla- taps her on the hand and says, honey, what about grace before meals? And the kid looks at the mom and says, mom, don't worry, grandma knows how to cook. You know, in Judaism, we have many prayers. And we always have the grace before meals and the grace after meals. The gratitude we give to the Almighty, recognizing that everything in our life is a gift. We say thank you before we eat. We say thank you after we eat. We say thank you in the morning when we get up. The first prayer a Jew says, the most beautiful prayer, 15 words, Thank you, God. The king of the world. That you return my soul to me. With great compassion as you trust. You trust in mankind. You trust in me that you gave me my soul to be able to have another day in this world to accomplish good things. It's a remarkable thing. In fact, the word Yehudi means gratitude. The word Jew means appreciating the gifts in our life, the things that the Almighty has given us. That's what it means to be a Jew. That's what it means to recognize the gifts in our life. I saw this poll where they asked people if they were comfortable about speaking about politics at their Thanksgiving dinner. And 25% of the people said they were uncomfortable. And I saw this um, commentator was saying how sad it is in America that a quarter of the people are uncomfortable to speak about politics. And I don't think that's sad. I think when we sit around our Thanksgiving tables, we have to think about the positive things we're gonna speak about, the gratitude we're gonna give, the blessings in our life. You know, they say the story about this guy who decided he was going to change the world. And then he realized that he couldn't change the world. He said, I'll change my country. And then he realized that he couldn't change his country. He said, I'll change my city. And then he realized he couldn't change the city. He said, I'll change my, my, my little town. And then he couldn't realize he couldn't change his town. He said, I'll change my family. And then he realized he couldn't change his family. He said, I'll change myself. And when he changed himself, he was able to change his family. And when he changed his family, he was able to change his town. And when he impacted his town, he was able to impact the city and the state and the country and the world. What are we going to speak about our Thanksgiving dinners? How are we going to be positive and thoughtful in the words we use, the kindness we speak about others? This is a remarkable thought that I wanted to share with you from this week's Torah portion and connect it to that. You know, in this week's Torah portion, we read about Esau and Jacob, two brothers. And Isaac gets old, and he's blind, and he wants to bless Esau. Now, Esau was a pretender. Esau was an imposter. He was very good at faking to his father that he was a great guy, although he worshipped idols, although he married out of the, where his dad wanted him, but he was an imposter. And his father wanted to bless him, his older son, and give him the blessings from God. Now, Rebecca, Isaac's wife, she understood, and she was the mother, she understood that the hair, the one who was there, the one who was going to take over the ideas, the values that Abraham instilled within Isaac was going to be Jacob. And it wasn't going to be Esau. That if Esau got the blessings, he would corrupt it. So what did she do? She told her son Jacob to pretend he's Esau and to come to his father. And since his father was blind, his father couldn't see the difference. His father blessed Jacob. And the rabbis tell us, Rashi, the great commentator, tells us that God specifically made Isaac blind that he shouldn't be able to see and he should give the blessings to his younger son who was really the deserving son. So the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a blessed memory, asks a very basic question. The Rebbe says, I don't understand. Couldn't God just tell Isaac, hey, 
Esau's up to no good. He's pretending he's an imposter and give the blessings to your other son, to Jacob. Why did he have to make him blind? And the rabbis say something so powerful. They say God didn't want to speak gossip, even if it was true about Esau, who was wicked, but God didn't want to speak badly about him to Isaac. Says the Rebbe, how much more so if God didn't want to say the truth about Esau in order to get the blessings to Jacob and he made his father go blind, how much more so us? Do we have to be careful in the words and the choices we use and how we speak about others? You know the story about the guy who jokingly said, he says, I don't like repeating gossip. So listen the first time. Think about what you're going to speak about at your Thanksgiving dinners. What's the impression you're going to give on your children, on those around you, on your friends? Are you going to speak positively about people? Are you going to be happy for others' success? Are you going to judge people favorably who might think different than you? This is a time when we all sit together on Thanksgiving and we give gratitude to the Almighty. We show our children examples. We set examples of the people we are by how we speak, the choice of topic we take. You'll watch the Patriots game or wherever else you live. You'll watch football. You'll watch a movie. But the choices of the topics you choose to bring up for conversation and how you speak about those you disagree with is really going to be the message we send our children. And this week's Torah portion sends us a clear message from God. Don't do it, even if it's true. Find positive things to say about others. God bless you. Have an awesome day. And enjoy your turkey Thanksgiving dinner. And make sure to make a blessing. And thank the Almighty before you eat and after. Have a great day.